Hi, this is Ken, and thanks for watching this video. Uh, what I'm going to do today is, uh, I'm going to show you here in a second, I'm going to be replacing the carriage belt on my FreeJet 330TX. My carriage belt broke, and um, this video is going to show you how to do the replacement. You see, this is the belt. It actually snapped. I believe the reason why it broke is simple. Uh, I'm, I guess I was doing a terrible job of cleaning the uh, wet capping station, you know, getting all that ink gunk out of there. But anyway, <clears throat> eventually it got to a point where it just wouldn't go anymore and it literally snapped. So uh, unfortunately I didn't have any in stock uh, on hand to do, so I had to wait. I've been down for almost a week, actually a week tomorrow. So I'm going to go about showing how to replace that, how to remove the encoder strips so that um, I don't damage it in any way while I'm doing this. All right, first thing you want to do, first thing you want to do is you want to undock your uh, carriage, your print head, and just set it out here in the center. As you can see, my belt is broke, so it just freely moves. <laughs> uh, but anyway, uh, get that undocked, get that in the center. And what we're going to do first is we're going to take out this screw and I suggest you get a magnetic screwdriver in case, you know, so it holds onto the screws as you take them out. You're going to take this one out on, on the front bar here, the bar with the laser on it. But we're going to take this screw and then we're going to take this one which is next to that laser. So hopefully you can see that okay. And then we're going to take this one out. All right. All right, I'm over here on the right side now. I'm going to take this one out, and then I'm going to take this one out. All right, back over here on the left-hand side, we've got this these screws out. Now we're going to take two screws out on this L kind of an L bracket and then we should be able to remove that. Now we should be able to remove this. Get it up out of the way. Let's see how that's done. I'm supposed to be able to take this out, but I haven't figured out how it comes out. But I think what's important here is that we can remove this bar now. And we're just going to set it out of the way. And uh, it, it has a... I'm just going to set it off this here like that. Just because what's going to happen is this is going to get released and that'll, that bar will be in the way. Okay, with that, that bar out, there's going to take these top screws out. There's one, two, three, four, five, six. One of them has this ground attached to it, so you got to re remember that, that that's where that's at. And then when we get down to this part where the circuit board is, um, you're going to have to remove the cable off the ends. There's one here and there's one here. We're going to have to remove those so we can take that bar out. Well, 
when this bar comes out, what will happen is the print head should come forward so we can work, you know, with the, um, the encoder strip as well as with the belt. We can get it out from under, behind the, uh, the carriage there. So we're going to get those taken care of now. Okay, I'm at the circuit board now, taking off the two screws at the top, and then um, I'll disconnect the ribbon cables from it. Um, actually, what I think I'll do is I'm going to mark this one, just put a little line on it with a marker. That way, when I go to put it back on, I'll know that that's the upper part. But this one over here should not be hard to figure out because it's bent. So, and to remove these, you, you, you remove them straight out, but I'm going to mark them first. Just in case. I'm just going to put a mark. That'll let me know that this is what's got to be facing me or up. Okay, now I'm going to remove these. And you should be able to just pull them straight out. Because when you go to put them back in, you're going to want to put them back in straight in. You don't want to be messing around. You don't want to damage those cables. So now that's these are done. I'm going to kind of tuck this away somewhere. I'll, I'll just out from the side. Alright, now I'm going to remove this bar and when I do that carriage should see how it just tilts? Yeah, you can see that. Good. So I'm going to show you a picture on the back of this. Okay going into the back of that you can see in the back of the carriage this is looking down at it you can see where the decoder strip or the encoder strip is right here and it's kind of you know it's connected see it goes right through there that's how we're going to remove it and this belt is in here now my understanding is this belt has teeth typically on one side which will be on the inside but there's a section of the belt that has teeth on both sides of the belt and that's what's going to have to go right here okay what I should have done was I should have detached this encoder strip first before I let it drop all the way down. So to do that, all you have to do is just grab this end here and just gently move it over and take it out of the slot. Okay, here we go. Now it's out. So I'm just going to remove that, pull it out from that section in the back, and then I'll just feed it right back in that way. There's nothing wrong with that encoder strip that I'm aware of, but I don't want to damage it. Okay, I'm still dealing with this. I'm going to go put, gently push this in along the wheels. That plastic wheel sounds like it's supposed to come out with it. But I don't... Here we go. Here we go. So push it down and see how that came out with it. Now I can bring it back and make sure I grab a hold of that. So hopefully you can see that. We get it in here. So I brought that out with it. That is now out. So now I'm going to go ahead and remove, get this back up out of my way. <coughs> As I was saying, I showed you a picture of that wheel. So I'm thinking that it should just 
come out what it is you're just gonna have to gently pull this through yep there it is all right you're gonna have to bring it out a little bit and then this just pulls straight up all right here's the new belt if you look at the belt it's going to be hard to see it on this, but one side has teeth. You can feel it. And then one side doesn't, except for one area that will have teeth on both sides. You can see here that it's darker in that area. See that? It's right in here. So that has to go back in that section that you pulled out of behind the carriage bar so now i'm going to attempt to put this back in move the camera so we can maybe get in there and see what i'm doing i've got it stretched out here and then i'm going to feed this belt up underneath that clip kind of bend it to the way the shape it needs to be bent to and you'll you'll see that when you get into it and then kind of gently push down on it and it should lock in or be in good enough i've got it in there now i just want to make sure that it stays there apparently those teeth on both sides what that's going to do is it's going to hold on to that carriage and see it's not wanting to move so that's when it moves the belt's going to go back and forth so obviously when i'm done with all this i got to clean the bar <laughs> carriage bar and i'm going to have to clean um, the encoder strip and all that good stuff and re-lube this carriage bar and uh yeah i'm that's good all right now i'm going to grab that white piece get this in here this is going to be the top. There we go. So I'm going to set this up underneath it and you'll see where that angle goes at. Okay, I got it there. There. I just gently pulled back on both, you know, on the belt and it snapped into place so now yeah. okay now that it's snapped in um, I'm going to grab onto the belt now the key is I got to get this on here so I might help it gently by giving myself a little bit of release there and just put around that sprocket now it's in you can see that it looks like it's going to work just fine so all right okay i've shown the camera again that way so you can see what i'm doing now this goes this way so i'm going to feed that back underneath there have it come out the other side grab onto it and then i can reconnect it Okay, it's there. Okay, I kind of backtracked a bit. I want to show you this. I'm feeding that in there. I'm not in there all the way tight, but what I wanted to do, I wanted to show you that the belt still has to be on top like this. Makes sense. I need to clean that, obviously. <laughs> um, so the bottom of the belt, when you put it on, when you put the bottom of the belt on, it needs when it goes into, into the carriage it needs to be the bottom portion as you see as i bring this out now it'll ride above it okay i got that wheel back in and i got it on the sprocket over here so what i wanted you to see was when you place the dual teeth or the dual sided teeth into the cartridge or the carriage like this when you go to close it, see the belt needs to be above. 
See how that's still above? Now it's back together. Okay, I got the encoder strip threaded back in through appropriately. I got the belt aligned correctly. And now it's a matter of reversing all the bolts. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to end up plugging ribbon cables back into that board, get that board up here with the mounting, you know, with the, the bar that goes up there and get all these screws back in there and get that held in place. Don't forget that you have the ground wire for your motherboard that's also attached there. And then when I'm done with that, then I'll put the bottom bar back in and uh, we'll get it all buttoned up and then the real test will be see what happens when I turn it on. Now all I got to do is get the screws in. Like I said, don't forget the ground wire. I got the cables in. We're ready to go. Okay, look at that, moving good, belt proper. Okay, I did a little bit of cleaning uh, before I fired up. Right now I'm going to clean the encoder st strip and then I'm going to apply, I already cleaned the bar pretty good, um, the carriage bar. And I'm going to put a little grease on it and uh, then at that point we're going to fire it up. What I use is a eyeglass cloth and some alcohol. I just put her on there and yeah. now I'll clean that coder, decoder strip, encoder, whatever. So let me move this down.
like I said, I bought a another encoder strip just in case that something were to happen to this. At one point, I imagine it will. And because you know it's a man-made printer, and I don't know what what all OmniPrint did to them, you know. So um, the other thing I'm going to do before I well, I don't have to worry about it right now, but yeah, um, I'm going to put some grease on it now. I got the uh, encoder strip cleared. Let that dry out. Get a little bit of grease. I still have the original grease that came with the uh, printer, which is extremely expensive when you have to buy it. So I'm still looking for alternatives. Um, possibly end up using uh, some of that white lithium grease. I don't know if that will harm anything using that or not, but I'm going to put a little dab, little dab, little dab, a little dab, little dab, little dab, probably putting too much on now that I see the thinking of it. But anyway, I got the grease on there. I, I can see a couple spots I didn't get cleaned. But anyway, I got that dabbed on, and uh, I'll move this carriage back and forth some. Oh, I see what's wrong. <laughs> I'm like freaking out over nothing. Let me turn this back, get that white piece down and it'll go down when I turn it back on won't it so okay um, all right here goes nothing <laughs> are we ready this is always the scary part, but we're going to do it anyway. See what it does. That circ pump's going to run. It's a, a TX Plus, but I don't use the Plus part anymore. And uh, what I'll do here, that's basically it. Alright, hopefully this video uh, helps somebody um, and um, now I'm going to prime, I'll prime the ink, do my head cleans, check my nozzles, um, so yeah, thanks a lot for uh, tuning in and uh, if you like, like the video, subscribe if you like, but nonetheless, hey thanks a lot, hope this helped you out, this is Ken. Signing off.